welcome back dear students i am dr savita didme and we are studying the subject cell biology and under which we have already started chapter number 3 that is a plasma membrane in previous two lectures we have studied little bit recap we are seeing so in the first lecture we already studied the physical chemical composition that is structure structural composition of the plasma membrane right chemical composition in which protein lipid carbohydrate right all this com components of the plasma membrane we have already started in the second lecture we started the fluid mosaic model of a plasma membrane along with the video right so in the present lecture we will be studying the transport that is transport across the membrane how the biomolecules they are transported inside the cell through the plasma membrane as well as from the cell inside how the molecules they travel or they transported outside the cell that is export right so uh, let's start here the main function of the plasma membrane as everybody is aware of the uh, plasma membrane that is nothing but a limiting boundary of the cell so the main function of the plasma membrane is to regulate the flow of material in that is inside the cell as well as out of the cell that movement of material or molecules across the cell is called as a transport so this transport of a material is regulated by the size of the pores present in the plasma membrane so this plasma membrane if you see dear students it is perforated means it is having number of pores millions of pores are present on the cell surface again the number of pores is variable right but again the transport of a molecules by molecule across the membrane that is from cell outside to inside is depend on the number of pores present in the plasma membrane so this plasma membrane is called as a semi permeable because which allows the passage of a solvent but not of all solids right that allows the passage of a solvent across the membrane so solvents they are easily pass through the membrane but the solid molecules they don't pass through the membrane easily so the plasma membrane is considered to be semi permeable the plasma membrane which permit one substance to pass through more easily than other is called as a selectively permeable right so plasma membrane is also called as a selectively permeable or a semi permeable why selectively permeable because it allows or it allow the entry of one substance through it more easily than the other substance so that's why it is called as a selectively permeable it works on the selective principle right so that's why the plasma membrane is considered to be the semi permeable as well as a selectively permeable right so the transport of the metabolite through plasma membrane takes place in four ways let's see which are they so simple diffusion facilitated diffusion primary active transport and the secondary active transport but this facilitated and simple diffusion as these two they don't need energy so it is clubbed into a one that is passive transport and another one primary and secondary but both of them they are active transport so needs energy primary active transport and secondary active transport needs energy hence it is considered to be the active transport sub types of the active transport so there are basically two types of the transport of a metabolite takes place through plasma membrane the type 1 is a passive transport that is without spending energy and type 2 is a active transport that requires energy right okay let's move ahead and see what is there the next is a passive transport that is called as a simple diffusion so first type in the passive transport is a simple diffusion so the simplest way for a solid to move from cell outside or uh, to the other that is from cell outside to the cell inside right is very easily and that is takes place along the uh, concentration gradient so it is unassisted kind of a 
ट्रांसपोर्ट यू डोंट नीड एनी काइंड ऑफ असिस्टेंस और मेडिएटर और सपोर्टर और कैरियर मोलिक्यूल नो यू डोंट नीड एनी काइंड ऑफ असिस्टेंट सो इट इज कॉल्ड एज अन असिस्टेड ट्रांसपोर्ट सिंपल डिफ्यूजन इज सेट टू बी अन असिस्टेड टाइप ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट राइट एंड इट्स अ कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इज हायर to a region from where it is been transported towards the lower concentration so that is called as a concentration gradient so what is a concentration gradient concentration gradient is nothing but the concentration of a particular molecule or substance at a particular area is more and it is always transported from their high concentration to low concentration so that is called as a along the concentration gradient right say this a cell will consider this one right so if so this is a inside of the cell this is a plasma membrane and here is a cell outside so inside the cell what is there potassium sodium chloride ions are there but consider the concentration amount of this potassium ions and sodium ions inside the cell is more just consider right and outside the cell the potassium ion concentration is less so concentration differences form at the or across the plasma membrane right towards the inside high concentration of the potassium and outside is the low concentration of potassium so ultimately what happened the potassium molecule from cell inside it get transported through the channels or through the cell pores membrane pores right to cell outside and this transport is going across the concentration gradient say from the higher concentration to their lower concentration right so this is called as a concentration gradient or transport of a molecule along the concentration gradient it don't need any kind of energy right so this is called as a simple diffusion and this will run as long as the concentration balance that is amount of uh, potassium ions on the cell outside and amount of potassium ions on the cell inside till it become equal that is number will become equal till then the concentration or this transport simple diffusion will going on but once it is stable no further diffusion will takes place so there is no such a stereo specificity it means a uh, different uh, types different uh, ions of the potassium uh, stereo isomers of the potassium ions no it is not a stereo specific any kind of isomer is involved and it again doesn't require energy so this kind of a diffusion is called as a simple diffusion right so here is also chloride ions they are transported all right now here plus and minus sign is there plus is for that is stand for the potassium ions and minus stand for the chloride ions so this is nothing but a kind of a membrane potential right so plus that is potassium ions are there in a channel or in a pore or on the cell surface so during which the negatively charged ions get it pass out easily here is negatively charged ion through which the positively ion charged ion get pass easily but this keep on changing this positive and negative charges keep on changing as a membrane potential changes right membrane potential changes so positive will be replaced by negative again negative will replaced by positive so that may waves of conformation passes through the cell surface that conducts or carry some kind of a specific signal here next is facilitated diffusion so in this type of diffusion energy is not required and it takes place along the concentration gradient means the same way the moment of the molecule from their higher concentration say this m stand for the molecules any kind of molecule it is right so this is a cell outside this is cell membrane cell inside this is what the carrier molecule involved so movement of this molecule from their higher concentration to their lower concentration let's say this molecule number of molecule outside the cell is more in number as compared to the inside so outside high concentration and inside the cell there is a low concentration so this establish a concentration gradient and movement takes place from higher concentration to lower concentration so this is called as a, along the concentration gradient if it goes in a reverse manner if it goes in a reverse manner that is movement from their low concentration to high concentration so that is against the concentration gradient okay fine 
so in this energy is not required again it takes place along the concentration gradient and however it differs from simple diffusion in some respect what is the way through which it is different from the simple diffusion so here in the simple diffusion no carrier molecule is required is it can you see the carrier molecule no no carrier molecule is required the molecules that is ions can easily pass through the pores of the plasma membrane right no carrier is required and in this case here the carrier molecule is involved right carrier molecule is involved this is the only difference and uh, one more thing is that in the facilitated in the simple diffusion no stereo isomer or a stereo specificity was not there right here the stereo specificity is there specific kind of a molecule that is with the stereo isomer specific stereo isomer will pass through the membrane along with the carrier because this carrier is specific no about or for a particular kind of a stereo isomer so this is the difference carrier molecules are involved for transport of the molecule across the membrane and second stereo specific process that is only one isomer is transported across the membrane at one time or by using that specific transporter right now the role of a carrier protein is simply to facilitate the diffusion of a polar or charged solutes so potassium sodium or this m say stand for molecule are the charged ions right so polar molecules or you can say charged ions they are transported across the membrane with the help of this Uh, carrier molecule so, so this is the function performed by the carrier its function is what its function is transport of a charged or a polar molecule across the membrane so carriers what are the carriers right what are the carriers so carriers are the proteins with relatively low molecular weight they are small molecular weight proteins ranging from 9 to 40000 daltons so variable or uh, variation in the size of this carrier molecule is there because different types of means huge number of molecules are there right and for every molecule for every stereo isomer there is specific kind of a carrier so varieties of carrier molecules are there there is a great variation in their size or, or we can say the great variation observed in the number of uh, that is weight of the isomer that is sorry a uh, carrier molecule yes in the weight of a carrier molecule so the metabolite bind to this carrier this m stand for the metabolite or the molecules metabolite that bind to the carrier protein at the outer surface say we have already explained this this is the cell outside where the metabolite or by molecules they are more in number get attached with the carrier molecule and forms the carrier metabolite complex so this is called as a carrier metabolite complex that carrier metabolite complex diffuses along the concentration gradient concentration gradient means at one side the concentration of that specific molecule is more and on the other side the concentration is less and along the concentration gradient means the movement from their higher concentration to their lower concentration so this carrier a uh, metabolite complex that diffuses from their outer side means from their higher concentration to lower concentration that is along the concentration gradient this diffuses along the concentration gradient and the metabolite then released towards the cell inside or inner surface of the cell membrane as there is a low concentration of the metabolite right and it is continuous as long as the concentration gradient is developed and the transport of a glucose into the erythrocyte is one of the good example in the erythrocyte that is in the rbcs the glucose molecule is transported through the facilitated diffusion right so let's move ahead and study that uh, another type of diffusion that is active diffusion okay so in the active diffusion active means what requires energy spend some energy right so in a simple way this kind of a transport requires energy because it used to transport the 
molecule across their concentration from their low concentration to their high concentration by molecules they have been transported so that is called as a across the concentration gradient and hence as it is transporting molecules across the concentration gradient it requires energy and hence it is called as a active transport right so the active transport diffusion of a substances takes place across the membrane from their high concentration to their low concentration as i said earlier but membranes are also able to affect the transport of a solute up the gradient that is in the direction of the increasing concentration normally cells have a higher concentration of a potassium here in the diagram you can see this is active that is the primary active transport so inside the cell normally what is there higher concentration of a potassium ions which is maintained at all the time in every cell potassium ions are maintained in more amount and uh, when the cell is at the resting position it is used for maintaining the resting potential or you can say a uh, specific um, cell uh, equilibrium this ions are required right so to do so the cell has to continuously translocate the solute or potassium ions into the cell by active transport mechanism at the expense of a metabolic energy so as inside the cell number of right number of or amount of a potassium ions they are more right and outside the cell amount of potassium ions they are less so what will happen then it used to transport the molecules across the concentration most of the inorganic ions amino acids carbohydrates are actively transported across the membrane right and the cells always translocate essential nutrient from the extracellular environment to the interior of the cell irrespective of the concentration in the external medium so normally what happened the cells let's go back and see the structure of a cell again so normally what happens suppose the metabolite or nutrient or potassium ions they are more inside the cell but still they have been imported into the cell the metabolites coming across the cell membrane also imported across the membrane or taken inside the cell right so though their concentration inside this cell is more as compared to cell outside but still they have been imported inside the cell or imported into the cell so to do so that is from their lower concentration to higher concentration migration cell need some energy so metabolic energy in the form of atp is there spent and then the molecules they are transported actively across the membrane right now this is essential why cell does so okay why cell do so so this is essential in order to maintain a steady state so in many cells equilibrium of the diffusion can be adjusted by coupling energy yielding reactions so that the cells are able to translocate solutes or metabolite against the concentration gradient so addition it allows various substances such as a sec secretory substances or secretory products waste material to be removed from the cell or organelle even when their concentration outside is greater than the cell inside cell so not only going to uh, just import the molecule inside it but cell also going to import the concentration of a waste material that is a uh, unwanted material outside the cell is more right as compared to cell inside but still whatever excretory material or toxic gases toxic material is produced during the metabolic activity that is released outside forcefully thrown outside the cell though their concentration outside is more but still it is been added across the concentration gradient so such a kind of a transport requires energy right so uh, very substances such as secretory products waste material to be removed from the cell because whatever cell is going to produce that is uh, in the form of maybe secretory product or some hormones nutrient enzymes that is released outside from the cell 
or from the cell organelle even when their concentration outside is greater than the cell inside so this again requires energy and that is uh, called as a active transport so this enables the cell to maintain this active transport enables the cell to maintain a constant non equilibrium intracellular concentration of the specific inorganic ions especially potassium sodium calcium and hydrogen ions they are maintained at the higher proportion as compared to outside the cell and this is done or uh, this is um, done because the cell actively import the molecules uh, this in organic ions from the cell outside to cell inside right so the membrane proteins involved in active transport are often called as a pumps so number of such a membrane proteins are there okay which secretes select uh, which selectively transport the specific compound molecules or ions from one fluid mass to another the important feature of the active transports is that it has directionality so it always work in a specific direction an active transport system okay an active transport system that transport a solute across the membrane is one directional will not transport that solute actively in the other direction let me show you how it works okay so here in this diagram you can see clearly so primary active transport in which the molecules they have been transported that is sodium and potassium transported from inside to outside and that is again through the pump that is called as a sodium potassium pump or it is nothing but a carrier molecules located on the membrane and through which it has been facilitated by spending energy again the same pump is not been used reverse in a reverse direction so same pump that is primary active transport or the uh, molecule carrier molecule involved in the transportation is not used in a reverse direction right so it is a unidirectional from inside to outside this pump will work further so again for the entry of a same molecule that is sodium and potassium or a same inorganic ions from cell outside to cell inside there is another carrier molecule here the glucose carrier is named given another carrier molecule is that that always work in direction like this from cell outside to cell inside it carries the molecule from cell outside to cell inside so it is again unidirectional right the pumps they are not uh working in a mixed way they are always in a one direction working in a unidirectional or a vectorial so depending on the energy source active transport is regarded as being either direct or indirect so in indirect active transport the accumulation of a solute molecules or ions on one side of the membrane is coupled directly to the to an exergonic reaction or chemical reaction most commonly the hydrolysis of atp so during this active transport uh though if it is uh, active or you can say if it is a direct active transport so that involved in direct uh, hydrolysis of a atp molecule that is utilization of a atp molecule and by spending energy this channel get open to transport these biomolecules or the inorganic ions across the cell membrane so in another inactive uh, indirect active transport what happened so depend on the co transport of the two solute with the movement of one solute down its gradient driving the movement of the other solute up its gradient right so what it means so co transport of a two solute suppose these two solutes they have been transported simultaneously right so these two molecules they have been transported simultaneously so this is called as a co transport with the movement of a one solute right with the movement of a one solute down its a gradient suppose its a movement is going on and its a concentration gradient is dropped down right then what happened 
it's a concentration driving the moment of the other solid up it's a gradient so ultimately that result in increase the concentration gradient of other molecule membranes allows the water and non polar molecule to penetrate by the simple diffusion simple physical diffusion yes water molecule for transportation of a water molecule inside the cell it doesn't require any energy it going to enter into the cell through the simple diffusion however the cell membranes are permeable to various polar molecules right such as ions sugar amino acids and nucleotides and many cell metabolites that pass across the artificial liquid bilayer very uh, very slowly so this is been tested inside the laboratory how these molecules they transported inside the cell whether they transported by spending some energy or whether they transported across the uh, that liquid bilayer without spending energy this has been already conducted or study is already conducted and in that study it is observed that so the cell membranes are permeable to various polar molecules when they studied in artificial cell membrane or liquid bilayer they observed that the ions sugar amino acid nucleotide and many cell metabolites that cross the artificial liquid bilayer very slowly right so it is now known that the specific membrane proteins are responsible for transferring such a solute across the cell membrane and these proteins referred to as a membrane transport proteins occur in many forms and in all the types of biological membranes right okay so here in this diagram also we can see this is what the membrane transport protein okay so here to say this is a cell outside and this is say cell okay here is already given outer side inner side so here is the inner side right okay cell inside and from the cell inside suppose we will say the metabolite or excretory material or uh, waste material that get attached with a carrier molecule and that carrier when carrier uh, metabolite complex is formed it turns its a direction right it goes to the cell outside right and where this concentration of this metabolite is low ultimately it result in dissociation of this metabolite complex the metabolite or the waste material is then released outside the cell again this carrier molecule it doesn't going to remain in the position it again twist back and come to the cell inside again involved in next transportation right and again here in this case let's say suppose the energy if energy required this molecule is protein charged shape right so actually this is in continuation with the this flow okay it is in continuation with this flow it get attached with the cell uh, with the carrier and then it is released outside what happened a rotational rotation of the protein this carrier protein is there that can change its form that can change its active site and the protein which requires again energy right and the protein charged shape is further get converted into another carrier according to this which again involved in transportation of a biomolecule okay forget it only remember the molecules means uh, carrier molecules are nothing but the proteins present in the plasma membrane that involved in transport of the biomolecules by forming a carrier uh, metabolite complex and that carrier metabolite complex is further going to release dissociate when it turns towards the outer side cell exterior right okay so uh, some export proteins that is carrier proteins are there which are unidirectional one right why the unidirectional or uniport because they involved in transport of a molecule from the one direction only from cell inside to cell outside only okay so as they are working from one side or one direction so they called as a uniportal or uniports or uh, one directional carrier proteins and whereas other proteins as co transport system in which the transfer of one uh, solute depend on the simultaneous or subsequent transfer of the second solute either in the same direction is called as symport or in the opposite direction called as a antiport right so some 
carrier molecules works as i said earlier they are involved in transport of a molecule in only one direction that is from cell inside to cell outside that is called as a unipore whereas other cell proteins or carrier proteins are there they involved in transport of a both that is from cell inside to cell outside and from cell outside to cell inside so they called as a uh, antipode or or if they are involved in transport of one more biomolecule along with the specified one so they called as a sympore okay with this dear students we have completed the topic that is transport across the membrane in which active transport and passive transport we have studied in the next lecture we will be studying the pinocytosis and phagocytosis